This is a short video on creating your first simulation model in Insight Maker. When you um, tell Insight Maker you want to create a new Insight, this is the page that it takes you to, and it gives you a completely operational simulation model that you can look at the parts for. You can click on them, look at the values of, of the components, see that the flow is rabbits times the birth rate, and, and the value of rabbits initially is 200 and you can you can actually run this and it runs from time zero to time 20 years starting with the 200 rabbits and ending up with with 1345 and a half rabbits and at the end of 20 years i'm not sure about the half a rabbit but, um, so so it gives you rather than giving you a blank page it gives you something to work with though as soon as you click clear sample model you end up with a blank page and probably the first thing that happens is is panic sets in and the question is, well, what do I do now? I'm gonna go through and create a couple of very simple simulation models to to sort of give you a roadmap to get started with. So there are a set of primitives up here that you use to, to create models with and connectors that you link them together with. And then you have a bunch of cosmetic stuff and then some some tools that help you do specific things with models after you create them. This you, once you create a model, you tell it to save it, and once you save it, every time you change something, it will automatically save the changes, and then a button to run the simulation, and this gets you back to the main Insight Maker page. So the primary primitives that you will create models with are stocks, which represents a, a quantity of something that increases or decreases over time, and variables. So you can click a, a primitive and then deposit it on the canvas, or you can right click and select it from the drop down. Either one is the same. When you create it, it it's selected so you can name it, type in the name of it, and then click simply on the canvas and it it, it sort of creates it. When you select an element, it gives you a configuration panel on the right, which displays all the different parameters that you can set with regard to a particular element. The, you can change this, the name of it here. You can enter a note that describes the element, or you can click on the down arrow and it opens a, an editor window for you. And I would, I would advise that you do, in fact, create notes to go along with elements to help capture what you're thinking when you create your models. You find it very surprising how many things you won't remember next week, next month, or next year about what you were thinking when you created the model. In this particular instance, this is a stock, which I said is a quantity of something that accumulates or declines over time. This stock has an initial value of zero, and this says, yes, it can go negative. So you can change, for certain things, you don't want them to go negative. But in this instance, it doesn't, doesn't matter. So this is just a stock. To, to increase or decrease a stock, requires a flow. Flows are the only thing that can increase or decrease the stock. Because of the nature of the graphics uh, software that this is created with, you have to create this flow and drag it out. That means it's going out of the stock, but I, and I really want it to go into the stock, so I click reverse and now it goes in. And I'm going to name this this flow one flow one, and I'm going to say that the initial value of the flow is one. Now I'm going to save this, my, for my first, my, my, no, your, your first simulation, O-N, and do a So you should write a description of what the simulation is about. And you can you can define tags, multiple tags, which provide search fields so you or other people can find your models, and then save it. So now that, notice that this is now dimmed. And every time I make a change, you'll see this becomes darker, and then it'll dim, telling you that it's been saved. So this this is a flow of one unit flowing into this stock. And I set up my time periods and say, I really want it to go from zero to 10 and I want it to go over hours 
and I want it to step one hour at a time. So with that set up, notice that it now saved. I click this and it goes ahead and it says it runs from zero to 10 hours and the value of the stock increases from, from zero to 10, which one would expect. Once you run a model, you can change the configuration of it. Here, I'm going to tell it that I also want flow one to be displayed. When you change the configuration of a graph, the results are automatically displayed because all of the values are stored. You don't have to rerun the model to see the, the new values if you want them displayed. And as you values are displayed, you can mouse over them to have it highlight them to better shoot, depict you which ones you're looking at and you can also click to, to turn them on or off. So this is absolutely the, the simplest simulation model that that I think you can create that actually does something. It's, you know, filling a swimming pool with a garden hose really, really, really slowly, or um, a river emptying into a lake or whatever. So I, but it's, you know, really simple, and the flow itself is not dependent upon the value of the stock. So if I now select this and hold down the control key and drag this over here, I've now made a duplicate of it. It's easier to duplicate parts than recreate them because um, I'm just basically lazy. And I'm going to change this to stock two. It's, uh, for this demo, this is just, it's just stuff. So, and we'll call this flow two. But here, I want, I want to make this flow dependent upon the value of the stock. So I'm going to select a link and connect from the stock to the flow, but it's sitting right on top of it so I can't see it. So I hold down the shift key and click on the link itself, which puts a couple of handles on it so I can move them around so I can better see the fact that the stock is influencing the flow. And now I'm going to change the stock so that it has an initial value of 1, and the flow, I'm going to define it as being the value of the stock. So now, rather than having a flow that's independent of the stock, the flow is the value of the stock. And if I run this over the same time period, it tells me that it doesn't show up because I didn't actually get it in to be... Let me tell it to display the stock and not display this flow. And now tell it to apply. So the first stock, which I can't see the value of anymore because it's so small, but the second stock starts at zero and goes to 1024 over 10 time periods, which just happens to be two to the 10th. And if you think about it, you're just adding the value of it over and over again every 10 time periods. So it produces exponential growth. What is nice here now is that I can click on this and turn this off so I can really see the value of the other stock because the value of it's overshadowed by this one. And now the phone's ringing, and this is going to drive me crazy. Bye. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. That was my wife calling about the, the mirror being ready or something. I don't know. So, so I, I've now created a model that produces exponential growth because of what's called reinforcing feedback. I'm going to create one more kind of model. I'm going to take this model, hold down the control key, and duplicate this again, and now change this to stock three, and this to flow three. But I'm going to add one more component. I'm going to create a variable and call it goal, and I'm going to connect that variable to the flow. I'm going to make the value of the stock zero initially, and the goal is 10. And then I'm going to tell it that the, f the flow is goal minus the stock. So the amount of flow depends upon the difference between the goal and the current value of the stock. So if I now run this over the same time frame, it's the, the, uh, the goal's out here, but that's not what I want. I actually want to know what, what um, 
stock three looks like. So let me go ahead and configure this and tell it to add stock three and turn this off and turn turn what turn turn this off. So it tells me that that in one time period stock three goes from zero to one, which probably isn't true. Um it's it's simply increasing too fast. I it the the flow can't go that fast. There's a there's a limit to the flow. So what I'm going to add is I'm going to add another variable, and I'm going to call it limit. I'm going to connect that to the flow, and I'm also going to create something called a slider. Tell it that I want a slider. Yes. And it could go from 0 to 1, and by 0.01 increments, what that slider does is create me a very a slider that I can change values with here very readily. And I now have to change the formula to say that this the flow is the goal minus the stock times times the the uh, okay, it's not a limit. It's more like a factor. Let me let me change this to factor. You'll quickly learn that that models are um, trial and learning. Don't don't think about it as trial and error. It's more trial and learning. So that you do things to figure out what the implications of them are, and then you see how they turn out. So if this factor is zero, it should be rather obvious that that the result of stock three will be zero because of what this formula says. I'm multiplying this times zero, so it can't possibly have any value. So if I run this, notice that the value for stock three is zero, which is sort of expected. Let me turn this off. Um, it's, isn't it? That's factor for stock three. Yeah, stock three is also zero. So let me go ahead and now change this to to, I don't know, point 0.2 and run it again. You can do lots of these runs and they're all sitting there on top of each other so that you can look at them. Let me turn off this one. So notice now, let me turn this one off too, that the factor has a value of point 0.2 which is limiting the flow of this thing so that that over time, this is this is the goal up here in red, and this is the value of stock three. So, and the amount of uh, let me go ahead and add in the flow three also because that might be instructive. Get rid of this again, and this. So it shows that that over time, the flow is decreasing because the flow is based upon the difference between the goal and what the, the stock is multiplied by the factor. So that as the value of the stock increases, the amount of the flow decreases and it continues to approach the value of the goal. So let me go here and turn off stock one and two and and just look at these these elements so I don't have to turn them off. So let me make the, the factor uh, 0.5 and run it again. So notice now that it's approaching and at about time seven it actually reaches the value of the goal. But notice how choppy this is. What that's telling me is that that because of the transitions in the model, the the, the time setting is is too coarse. So let me let me make this 0.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step through it every half hour and run it again. Notice how this is is smoothing out. So that to figure out whether or not you got I mean you want a time step that's small enough so that it doesn't miss any of the meaningful transitions in the model. Though not if it's too short it doesn't buy you anything it just takes longer and longer to run the model so it's it's another one of those trial and earnings learning scenarios where you try a value and if it's if it's 
chunky and you're missing things and you try a smaller one and once you have two values that don't seem to produce any difference in the result then you use the larger of the two of them so so here's here's the 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 uh, Federal Express version of the creation of three simple models, one where the flow is independent of the stock, one where the flow is reinforcing so that the flow is dependent upon the value of the stock and produces exponential growth, and one which is called a, a um, balancing feedback so that the structure approaches a goal these are the only three structures that exist. Every model that you ever will ever create, no matter how complicated it is, is simply some number of these, zero to n of them, combined together in a different manner to create the interactions. So, hope this was helpful. Take care. Bye.